am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing.
welcome to our Sunday service. We are happy that you are here with us and celebrate our day with the Lord. So let's all stand up and let's give God the glory and honor. Let's all be in the presence of God. Father in heaven, we give you praise and glory for all the things that you are doing. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. And once again, we are here at your courts to give you praise and glory. We ask thee, O oh God, that you will always be with us the whole, whole day and your presence will always be with us. This will ask in Jesus' name we pray. Yes, O oh Lord, we just want to welcome you in this place of worship, O oh God. We give you our hearts, O oh God. We open our minds and thoughts and hearts before you. We let you receive these songs of praise for glory unto your name.
declaring to the world your beauty and your majesty. Oh, hallelujah. We long to be with you. Oh, Jesus.
Good day po sa lahat. Welcome again to our uh, online uh, Sunday service today. Wow, the presence of God is uh, moving, is working even uh, in this kind of service online. So we continue our end times prophecy uh, series from now to eternity. Our topic today is the millennial reign of Christ. The importance and significance of believing and receiving Jesus Christ in our lives as our Lord and Savior is first we receive a miracle of salvation and transformation, forgiveness of our sin, healing of our uh, uh, spirit and soul and even our bodies and we become part of the family of God and we are entitled to receive all the blessings through Christ and we become co-heirs with Christ we become part of the bride of Christ and Jesus Christ is our groom and we will reign with Christ now even in the millennial reign of Christ for 1000 years and we become kings and priests and lords and Jesus Christ is the king of kings and the lord of lords we believe in the physical millennial reign of Christ when Jesus returns with his saints at his second coming and begins his benevolent rule over earth for 1,000 years. Okay, let's uh, see the second coming of Christ just before the millennial kingdom. 
This is the procession for the millennial kingdom. In Revelation chapter 19, starting from verse 11, we discussed this uh, last uh, last week, but we are going to explain well today. Okay, in verse 11, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And so, itong nakasakay po sa ng puting uh, horse for this uh, uh, second coming is the Lord Jesus Christ. He sat upon this uh, white horse. He is a faithful and true. Then verse 12 to 13, His eyes, the eyes of Jesus Christ, were like a flame of fire. Lumiliab ang, kan- ang uh, apoy sa kanyang mata. And on His head were many crowns. So the authority, all authority had been given to Jesus Christ. He had a name written that no one knew except himself, only Jesus Christ. He was clothed with a robe deep in blood. So he died on the cross. His blood was shed all over his body. And his name is called the Word of God. So he is Jesus Christ. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 7, it explained the second coming. In that verse 7, it says, look. He is coming with the clouds. Jesus Christ is coming with the clouds. And every eye will see Him. Lahat ng mga mata, makita nila si Jesus Christ. Even those who pierce Him, even those Israelites, yung mga pumatay sa Kanya, who crucified Jesus Christ, who uh, put the verdict upon them, saying, crucify Him, crucify Him, crucify Him. Ito po yung mga Jews. So, when Jesus Christ will come down, every eye will see Papaano nila makita with our physical, with their physical eyes, because Jesus was uh, his body was a glorified body, his body was like yung kanyang uh, body after his resurrection. Na nag- mayroon siyang glorified, powerful uh, body, but people can recognize him. Nakikita nila siya. Even na uh, Thomas, uh, he touched the the hands and the uh, yung uh, paan ni Jesus Christ uh, touching yung butas when Jesus was nailed. Ano? So, they recognize Him after that resurrection. And so, when Jesus Christ will come back for His second coming, every eye will see Jesus. Even those Israelites, they will see Jesus. And all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of Him. So shall it be. Amen. So, lahat makita nila. And so, the, in Romans chapter 11, verse 26, And so, all Israel will be saved. As it is written, The deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Verse 47, For this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. So all Israel will be saved. Kailan manin, kailan masisave lahat ng mga Israelites? Because up to now, up to now, those Jews, they do not believe Jesus Christ. When we uh, go to Israel, talagang, uh, when I, we talk with those Israelites, they don't believe Jesus Christ as their Messiah. They don't believe Jesus Christ that He died and rose from the grave. Hindi ni sila naniniwala. And so, actually, when uh, this time, when the Antichrist will come, ang mga Israelites, ang alam nila, siya yung Messiah. But uh, hindi. Antichrist yung uh, uh, inaccept nila as their Messiah na nakikapag-covenant sa kanila yung napag natin previously for seven years uh, covenant with uh, with uh, with Israel for, uh, uh, Antichrist and uh, Israel. So hindi sila naniniwala. So when? Kailan sila uh, maniwala? Kailan sila masisave? When Jesus Christ will come back. Ano? Every eye will see him, even those Jews who pierce him, who kill him, they will see Jesus Christ coming down. Because before that, we learned that uh, uh, when they accepted the Antichrist as their Messiah, after three and a half years, uh, the Antichrist uh, offer siya ng abominable sacrifice that causes desolation. Doon nila marirecognize na Antichrist pala yung inaccept nila na Messiah. And so uh, the Messiah will go after them to kill them. So they keep on running from their lives and God will spare them until Jesus Christ will come, their true Messiah. And when they will see Jesus Christ coming down, 
they will cry out and they repent of their sin and they said sorry forgive us we crucified you but you are the our messiah we did not accept you but we accepted the antichrist but now you are the true messiah so they believe now and accept jesus as their true messiah then from that all israel will be saved so yun yung restoration salvation and restoration ng mga israelites Okay, back to Revelation chapter 19, verse 14. So Jesus Christ is coming down from heaven with the armies, verse 14, with the armies of heaven. Sino itong mga armies of heaven were following him? Sila ba yung mga angels? Sila ba yung mga Old Testament saints? Sino itong mga armies of heaven were following him? Riding on white horses. Naka-ride din sila. They are riding ng white horse, just like Jesus Christ, riding ng white horse. Then, what, what else? And dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Naka, bado da iti, fine linen, white and clean. Sino ang mga ito? Yung mga bride of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 19, verse uh, 8 and 9. These are the, the bride of Jesus na, uh, who, na they wear fine linen, white and clean. Ito po yung mga good works ng mga Kristiyano. Good works ng mga anak ng Diyos. Ito po yung mga good character ng mga Kristiyano. So we keep that divine character, that good works, ano, uh, magandang ginagawa natin for the Lord because those are our fine linen, white and clean. So, si Jesus Christ coming down to make war again, satanic trinity for that Armageddon. So, ang kasama niya, Ang armies niya, bride. So, mga bridal warriors. So, when we become bride of Christ, we are warrior. Who are you? Warriors of God. Amen. Because we are the bride. So, we make war. Kasama natin ang commander-in-chief natin, si Jesus Christ, during this uh, uh, war of Armageddon. Verse 15. And out of his mouth, the mouth of Jesus Christ, goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations. So the weapon of God is not the atomic bomb. The weapon of Jesus Christ, our weapon is uh, not the missiles, not the, the grenade, yeah, not the hyperbolic missile. No, it's not. But the, the weapon of Jesus Christ is his word. So his word is... Uh, his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Na parang sword yun, pero that's the mouth of God. That's the, I mean, the word of God. That smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winespin of the fierceness and wrath, almighty God. Verse 16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings, the Lupuna, and Lord of lords. He is the king. He is the Lord. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Verse 19. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the world and their armies gathered together to fight against the one sitting on the horse and his army. So the Antichrist, the satanic trinity with his, all his soldiers from the, all over the world is fighting Jesus Christ and his bride. The armies of Jesus, the bride. We are the bride. We are the warriors, the armies of Jesus Christ. Bride at the same time, warriors. Amen. So that's the Armageddon. It's the war between Satanic Trinity with his, all his armies against Jesus Christ and his bride. Wala po doon mga angels, wala po doon mga Old Testament saints na makipaglaban. Now that's the, but the battle of Armageddon. And I believe as uh, we're preparing for war, going to war, as uh, when Jesus Christ will speak against uh, Satanic Trinity, then this is the, the seven bowl, the uh, the air, the bowl, the bowl, the seven, the last bowl will be poured out to the air, and it is done. Then great earthquake, great city split into part cities of the nations. Uh, that majestic Babylon, you know? then la, uh, lahat ng mga mountains will be flattened. And hailstone will come to uh, kill all those uh, people who have the mark of uh, 666. Sumabay! 
mga kapatid, parang yun yung uh, weapon of God against uh, the, all the people all here on earth. No? So, uh, Mark of the 666. Then verse 20, But the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet who had performed the signs in its behalf. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. Itong uh, Antichrist and itong false prophet, ano, sila yung nag-deceive. Na, na, uh, to force na mamarka ng mga tao with the 666. The two of them were thrown alive. Hindi sila mamatay physically. So remember, they are 100% physical. So hindi sila mamatay physically but alive that they will be uh, captured and be thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Ito po yung final hell. At po na wala pong napun, uh, pumunta sa final hell. Apoy lang po ang nandun at saka worm. Pero ang first batch na may throw down doon ay itong false prophet at saka antichrist. Mga demon ni si Satanas, andito pa sa earth. Mga evil spirits, mga fallen angels, andito pa sila. Wala pang napunta sa final hell. So the first batch, itong uh, antichrist and false prophet. Then verse 41, The rest were killed. How they will be killed? With the sword coming out of the mouth of the, the rider on the horse. Yung, yun lang yung weapon. You know? And all the birds gorge themselves on their flesh. Nagpiesta, mga birds. Then the anti-father, the dragon, Revelation chapter 21 to 3. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven. And he seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and threw him into the pit. And so, the satanic trinity will be captured. Antichrist and false prophet will be thrown into final hell, but Satan will be thrown into the bottomless pit. It's another place na, from uh, final hell. So, nandun sila, naghiwalay sila. <laughs> now, the question, how about those uh, evil spirits, fallen angels? I don't know, maybe uh, dito pa sa earth. Uh, no. Now, how about the others, the rest? Lahat ng mga natatakan ng 666, lahat sila ay namatay. All of them died. Ano? Pero mga Israelites, they did, uh, hindi sila namatay physically and even those, yung mga hindi nagpamarkan uh, ng 666, especially yung mga hindi na rapture. Ano? They keep on uh, hiding and hiding from one cave to another, from one place to another. Uh, good, hindi sila na-capture, hindi sila na-force na markaan ng 666. They will be alive na pupunta, mag sila sa pumunta sila sa millennial kingdom. Now, despite of, all, we are blessed. Mga kapatid, we are blessed because Jesus Christ is our Savior and Lord. Nagasat tayo kakapsat. So despite of all temptations of the world, attacks of the enemy, trials and tests even in this pandemic, God is still reigning in us because Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We fight the good fight of faith. Because in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, we can do all things through Christ. It's through Christ that we are alive. Through Christ that we are victorious. Through Christ that maganda yung parintakbo ng buhay. Because God is in control. Jesus Christ is in control. So this is our hope and assurance that Jesus Christ will never forsake us nor leave us. But Jesus will fight for us to gain victory. Victory after victory. We will win every battle, every test, even uh, from one pandemic to another because Jesus Christ is in us. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. We are serving Him. Hallelujah. So, we are so blessed. Now, let's see now the Millennial Kingdom in Revelation chapter 20, starting from verse 4 up to 10. So, the definition of millennium. There is to be a period of 1,000 years during which Satan shall be bound. So may bound si Satan for 1,000 years. And Christ shall reign on this earth. This period is mentioned six times in Revelation chapter 20. And is generally called the millennium from the Latin word mili, 1,000. And anum means year. So millennium, it means 1,000 years. In the times of the Gentiles, we saw the four worldwide kingdoms that were to succeed each other on the earth 
and that they were to be destroyed in turn by a kingdom called the Stone Kingdom in Daniel chapter 2 and chapter 3. So in uh, BC uh, 605 to 539, it's the Babylonian kingdom under King Nebuchadnezzar. And then uh, it is uh, Uh, Medo-Persian Empire, the breast of uh, silver doon sa, sa PowerPoint, sa statue na yan. Gold po yung ulo, Babylon Kingdom, sa breastplate at sa kamay ay uh, Medo-Persian Empire. Then uh, sa waist ay ties as of brass, the Grecian Empire, si uh, Alexander the Great. And then yung legs of iron, yun yung kingdom of uh, Roman uh, Empire. And then uh, yung uh, yung yung uh, bato na that strike the the two the the feet of that uh, big statue is the the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the rock of our salvation so that is the destroying rock and that become the kingdom of Christ and so uh, until now uh, wala po yung empire empire na ngayon to uh, Uh, ang Amerika ang uh, world power ngayon ng ano but uh, hindi kagaya noon na talaga nga totally in control but Jesus Christ through his death and resurrection his kingdom is establishing his spiritual kingdom on earth but time will come in the in the millennial kingdom 1000 years as those four kingdoms were literally kingdoms it follows that the stone kingdom must be literal kingdom for it takes the place of those kingdoms and it fills the whole earth this stone kingdom is the millennial kingdom of christ and the form of government of this uh, kingdom god will rule in the person of the lord jesus christ for 1000 years reign of christ on earth because jesus christ is sovereign god he is the king of kings and the lord of lords our savior his kingdom is unshakable daniel chapter 7 verse 13 to 14 in my vision at night i looked and there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven He approached the ancient of days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worship him. The dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. So his kingdom is unshakable. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, Since we are receiving an unshakable kingdom, this is the kingdom of Jesus Christ, in the millennial kingdom, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping Him with holy fear in awe. Yan. And so, the kingdom of God. Now, let's see the, sino yung uh, mga characters ng dandun sa millennial kingdom? Of course, the Lord Jesus Christ as King of Kings and the uh, Lord of Lords. Then the second is the church that composed of the bride of Jesus Christ, both uh, uh, Gentiles and Jews who give their lives to Jesus Christ. Yung uh, narapture sila, narapture tayo. Ano? Uh, sila po yung mga church, yung, I, I mean the bride of Jesus Christ. Okay? And so si, sila yung kasama ng uh, groom, the Lord Jesus Christ. And this, the bride will reign with him, the same glorified body, with the body of Jesus Christ. We are kings and lords. From uh, uh, we are dispatched and assigned from uh, different places, nations of the world. By the way, when this uh, millennial kingdom, the diba, great tribulation, palang palang sirang sirana. The, because of the great earthquake, the, the wrath of God, the bowls, the hailstones, the flatten, walang mga bundok, diba? including sa Israel. But uh, when Jesus Christ will come, uh, na may usher ang uh, millennial kingdom, uh, there will be a uh, reconstruction or renovation of the earth. Okay, because uh, the characteristic that the nature of this uh, millennial kingdom is is so be- very beautiful. For me, it's like the restoration of the Garden of Eden. So beautiful place, so wonderful. 
Pero, uh, and so the Bible says, Jesus Christ is the second Adam. Because the first Adam in the Garden of Eden fell because of sin. But Jesus Christ must come, the second Adam. He was righteous. Wala po siyang kasalanan. And so, uh, the restoration of the Garden of Eden, ito po yung millennial kingdom. So, ang kasama ng the Jesus Christ, uh, the, the bride. And, and number three, the Israelites. Yung mga hindi naniwala na nikasama sa, sa rapture, itong uh, Israelites na hindi naniwala si Jesus Christ, kay Jesus Christ, naniwala lang sila when the second coming of Christ, as I explained a while ago, ano, na hindi, with their physical body, okay, they will be assured because all Israel will be saved. And at the same time, the restoration of the land of Israel. So from that PowerPoint, yun po yung restoration of the land of Israel and all Israel will be saved. Makumplito po yung, po yung, po yung 12 tribes Israel. By the way, during the Great Tribulation, God will spare Israelites. As God spared uh, the Israelites from uh, King Pharaoh, the uh, Exodus, uh, sa Egypt, ano, uh, he spared them from ten uh, plagues. God will also spare Israel. During the seven years tribulation, great tribulation, God will spare Israel. And Israel, all Israel will be saved because in this millennial kingdom, the restoration of the land of Israel. <laughs> Amen. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 65, verse 19, And I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. You know, uh, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, up to now, there's no rest, there's no peace in Israel. Every year there is war, there is... Uh, Killing, there is bombing. Sawang-sawa ng mga Israelites sa mga war, sa mga trouble, and so they want peace. That's the one reason why they will accept the Antichrist for uh, seven years peace. Because uh, atat na atat sila na gusto nila yung peace, pero false pala yung inaccept nila na Antichrist. Ay, na, na Messiah, Antichrist pala siya. But during this time, when Jesus Christ will come, for the second time, I restore, I save, ang Israel, I restore, then rejoicing, peace will come. Peace and rejoicing, no more weeping. And another verse, Isaiah chapter 66, verse 12, For thus saith the Lord, behold, I will extend peace to her and a river, to her is Israel, and the glory of the Gentiles like flowing streams. So there will be peace to come to Israel like a river. Wow, there's rejoicing, there is peace and rejoicing to all Israel. And the glory of the Gentiles. We are we are Gentiles po. And the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Why? Because righteousness will come to the Gentiles. And Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So we are like flowing streams, like the Israelites, they are like a river. Amen. And then number four na character ng sa millennium is the Gentile nations. Ito yung mga uh, hindi namatay during the Great Tribulation. God preserved them. Their, uh, their lives, hindi sila nagpatatak ng 666. So, existing pa rin yung mga nations. Okay, these are the Gentile nations. At sa, ang mga tao dito na nayasya na hindi sila namatay, ano, ay uh, with their physical body, uh, with with also their, uh, the desire of their flesh. So there is marriage in this millennial kingdom. For 1,000 years, may uh, marriage, ano, uh, may mga bata dito na may panganak. Uh, and so there is a multiplication of people again. Why? Because billions of people died in the Great Tribulation. Billion people uh, received the mark of 66 and all of them died. This, uh, yung napag natin, one third of mankind, now, uh, grabe na almost lahat na ay mamamatay, so billions of people, and so during this millennial kingdom, there will be again a multiplication of people. Uh, yung mga walang asawa dyan, <laughs> pag hindi ka na rapture, you go through the great tribulation, you, uh, you hide, keep on hiding, 
And so if uh, hindi ka nagpatatak ng 666, isa ka dito. And there is still marriage there. Let's see the scripture. Isaiah chapter 16 verse 6. And the wolf will actually reside for a while with the male lamb. And with the kid, the leopard itself will lie down. And the calf and the uh, main young lion and the well-fed animal all together and a mere little boy will, will be the leader over them. So may mga bata. So saan galing itong mga bata? Yung bang na-rapture? No? Kasi kung ma-rapture na tayo, we are sexless. Talagang uh, walang uh, yang walang ano. We are the same. But itong mga na-explain ko kanina na galing sa great tribulation na physical body, well, they will multiply. So may maraming mga bata. Verse 8, The infant will play near the hole of the cobra and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. So may mga bata diyan pero yung mga animals naging uh, wala nang wild animals diyan. Puro domestic animals na. Walang uh, poison. Okay? So yung mga bata nakikipaglaro sa mga cobra. Ayan. Then uh, Isaiah chapter 60 verse 3. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your radiance. So the Gentile nations will be reconciled and blessed. The Gentiles will experience the final fulfillment of their blessing when the millennium begins. They will honor the Messiah, the King of Kings, and His throne in Jerusalem, be blessing Israel materially and every way. So lahat na ng mga nations from uh, uh, West, from uh, Middle East, to the Asia, to the East, to the Philippines, ano, na prosperity, prosperous, wala nang desert, wala nang mga, so if it is the restoration of Israel, wala na yung mga pestilence, walang mga famine, walang mga earthquakes, walang mga uh, disasters, walang mga disyerto, uh, very fertile ang mga land, prosperous land, blessing after blessing, grabe, Hallelujah. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse 9, They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my people, holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the earth. And so from uh, the bride, the Israelites, the Gentiles, because Jesus Christ is the, the, the King of kings and the ruler of lords, he is ruler, ano? one word, the uh, leader, Ano? There's a prosperous in every land. There is rain. There is a uh, grabe yung uh, uh, blessing that flowing. Then not only uh, material blessing but also knowledge. There's a perfect, there's now a knowledge especially the bread of Jesus Christ. Wala nang tamad, ay wala nang yung uh, uh, hindi alam, full of knowledge. Okay? And so, kahit na mag uh, scatter ng uh, Iti wara, I want to because they have knowledge and uh, there is uh, righteousness in that uh, nation, in that the whole world. Isaiah 65 verse 20, No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. So, mga pagbata, na, pag 300 years old siya, still young. <laughs> is still young. Huh? So, grabe, isang mag-asawa, ang dami na nilang anak. Multiplication. Go ye and multiply. Kasi nga, 600 years ang buhay nila, 700 years, 900 years, up to 1,000 years ang buhay, kaya they can still produce children. So, dadami ulit. Millions, billion again ang uh, tao during this time because it's a 1,000 years. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man and his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them until unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, I will remember their sin no more. 
And so all people will follow the Lord willingly. Wala nang nagtuturo. Wala nang uh, mga bobo doon. Wala. Talagang willingly in love with, their, with Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They willingly follow the Lord. You know? So napaka ganda yung buhay during the 1,000 years because it's not Satan, God of this world. No. Kasi in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, Satan is the God of this world today as of today. But during that uh, millennial kingdom, Satan will be bound in the bottomless pit for 1,000 years. You know? And so Jesus Christ is purely the king. We are the subjects and we are willingly following him. There is love operating. There is grabby presence of God there. Hallelujah. Though Jesus Christ is the king of kings, is, his throne is in uh, Jerusalem, but he is omnipresent. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere. <laughs> yes, di ba? Unlike the President Trump or President Duterte, he, they are not omnipresent. No, ay natin ayan na tata, jeda lang. But Jesus Christ is different. So, grabe yung rulership niya during this millennial kingdom. Amen. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6. So, the wolf will actually reside for a while. So, I did explain this one. So, the animal kingdom will be transformed. Now, the life in the millennium, there is love and peace. Okay? Because there will be no war. Nations will not have to devote a great part of their budget to war materials. Happiness, there is happiness and rejoicing. This will be fulfillment of happiness because there will be no more war. Nor will there be the multitude of sorrows now present to man on this earth. Grab young peace, love reigning there because Jesus Christ is there, uh, the ruler. And number three, there's long life and health. Isaiah 65 verse 20. Here in the 1,000 year millennial period, both sickness and death will be nigh removed. Maawan. Death will not be punished completely, however, during this period. Open sin may cause some to die because the millennial period, while filled with multiple blessings, is still not the end of God's final judgment. So there is a uh, long life. Walang namamatay. Walang COVID. Walang uh, uh, pandemic there. Wala. It's a good health. Perfect health. Then, number four, prosperity in that uh, millennial kingdom. Isaiah 35, 1 and 2. The millennium period will be one of the unequal prosperity. Unequal. Now, hindi nangyari. Even at our time, even sa first world countries, sa America, sa uh, Japan, sa Singapore, wala. Sa London, they cannot compare the prosperity in this millennial kingdom, unequal prosperity. There will be such abundance that there will be no one. Lahat I provided. There will be an economic prosperity such as never before has been experienced. So let's read Isaiah 35, verse 1 and 2. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. So grab yung prosperity. During that millennial, so this is the kingdom that we are looking, we are looking for. Amen. Now the seat of this government is in Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be become the capital of the earth in the kingdom age. In Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16 to 18, Sabedon, Jerusalem is the seat of the government. Don't po yung throne of Jesus Christ. Amen. And last, there will be a universal worship during this time. You know, last week, katatapos lang ang uh, Feast of Tabernacle. And you know what? Tayong mga Gentiles, ito na yung pinaka-actual, pinaka-masaya natin because 
every year we go to Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacle. As of now, itong mga Israelites, ano, these are celebrating the Feast of Tabernacle every September or October, every year. Okay, they gather together to the respective family. But for us, the Feast of Ingathering, every year, we go to Jerusalem. Latay, millions tayo na nandun to worship, universal worship. Let's read Zechariah chapter 14, 16 to 9. This is the more than uh, you are celebrating tabernacles more than any other feast. This is a feast of Christians, the feast of Gentiles. Ano? In Zechariah 14, it says that time will come when people from among the Gentiles will worship the King, the Lord Almighty, and celebrate the feast of tabernacles. So if you are a Gentile and we are Gentile who has come to know the Lord, this feast is for us. This feast is for you. In verse 16, And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year, year to year, this is our feast, year to year to worship the king from uh, the different nations all over the world. Year to year we go to Jerusalem to worship Jesus Christ, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Verse 17, If any of the peoples of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, they will have no rain. Wala silang rain. Verse 18, And if the family of Egypt would uh, go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the hidden that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. So, yung mga so this is the call of Jesus Christ as ruler of the entire world, this millennial kingdom. He mayroon siyang bird, may siyang rule na lahat ng mga uh, tao from all over the nations of the world will go to Jerusalem to worship. Kung may hindi pupunta, there will be no rain and there will be a uh, parang curse. There's no rain that will come. Verse 19, This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Mayroon silang punishment. No rain, there is a judgment, there is a, a curse. So, kailangan na they will go to Jerusalem for worship. Also, in Malachi chapter 1, verse 11, let's read, My name will be great among the nations. From where the sun rises to where it sets, in every place, incense and pure offerings will be brought to me because my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord Almighty. So, from Adam up to, this, uh, up to the second coming of Christ, wala, po yung, wala pa yung full blast na universal na praise and worship to God na glorious na worship that will only happen on earth during this millennial kingdom. And so when uh, Jesus Christ, the one world leader, requires all the nations all over the world to go to Jerusalem to worship Him for the Feast of Tabernacle, this is the Feast of Engathering. Wow, it's so glorious. It's so wonderful. Praise and worship. And God is so rejoicing. He's so pleased. Because the incense of that worship, the aroma of that praise and worship from the heart of the people, from those righteous people, it gives glory and honor the, to God. Amen. And so, mga kapatid, this we this realize nothing that praise and worship, worshiping God, is so essential. Don't you know that praise and worship is the weakness of God? And so, before you uh, ask anything from God, before you uh, ask the favor of the Lord, you have to please Him first. How? You have to worship Him. Like King David, he keep on worshiping God. Right? Because we were created to please and worship God. That's how, the reason why God created us, in order that 
we have to worship him. Amen. So, because, so God said, God inhabits his presence to the praises of his people. God inhabits. O may di presensya ni Apo To the praise and worship of the people, of his people. So like David, he became a man after the heart of God because he was a worshiper. Even at times of persecution and greatest worst trials, at all times, David kept worshiping God. And God was pleased. Alam, po, alam naman natin na makasalanan si King David. Murderer siya, adulterer siya. But because he humbled himself, he asked for forgiveness, and he kept on worshiping God, he became a man after the heart of God. Napaka-importante po ang pagpupuri sa Panginoon. All living creatures, because God says, let all that hath breath praise and worship God. Yung mga living creatures, most especially people, let all that hath breath praise and worship God. Because this is the desire of the Lord from us. This is the heart of God to worship Him. So all living creatures, even non-living creatures, they are actually worshiping the Almighty God, their Creator. Diba? Jesus Christ said, Kung hindi kayo magpuri, let the stone will praise me. Will praise God. Diba? Even the, the birds, the, the animals, the fish, they are worshiping God. Even the, the trees, the plants, the cactus, they are worshiping God. They stone, they are worshiping God. So how much more to us? God created us to worship Him. God created those creatures, those creations to worship their Creator. Amen. In conclusion of uh, this, the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, in order that we are part of this millennial reign of Christ. Let us Christ to reign in our lives. Let us surrender our lives to Jesus Christ. And let us receive Christ as our Savior and Lord and King. We will be saved and we will become part of the family of God and we will become part of the bride of Jesus Christ. And so we become king and lord in his kingdom. For Jesus Christ is the king of kings and the lord of lords. And, and we keep following Jesus Christ as disciples or followers of Christ. We keep on following him until we will lead to the marriage, lamb of, the, marriage of the lamb. Until we will reign with him in the millennial kingdom. Let us all arise. Takdar tayo kakapsal. It is essential, brothers and sisters, that you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it is essential, after receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior, let Him be the King. Let Him be the Lord over your life. Let Jesus Christ reign in your lives. You have to submit to Him. You have to surrender everything to Him. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 Hanan nga da tayo ti agbyag ti bukbukod tayo our own desire but Jesus Christ is now living in us reigning in us iso nang ti matungpal iti byag tayo because we, we accepted him as our Lord and Savior praise God as we continue to follow Christ because we are his disciples will be one to be raptured for our wedding with Him for seven years. And after that seven years, we'll reign with Christ for 1,000 years. And so, let's practice, let's allow Jesus Christ to reign in us. Amen. And so, those of you, 
You are not so sure of your salvation. And Jesus Christ is not yet Lord and Savior over your life. He's not yet reigning in your life. You may say that you are a Christian. You may say that you go to church. But actually, Christ is not living in you. You did not really accept Christ as your Lord and Savior from your heart. And actually, you are still living in your own desire, in your own will. And now Jesus Christ is asking, is inviting you, my son, my daughter, let me come in and let me the Lord over your life and I will reign in your life. So, brothers and sisters, if you want to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, and if you want to surrender everything to Him, and you want Christ to reign over you, He's the Lord of your life, I ask you to raise your hands to the Lord and follow after Him. Raise your right hand and follow after Him. Father in heaven, thank you so much for speaking to me. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I acknowledge that I am living in my own, ruling my own life. But now, Father, I surrender my life to you. Jesus Christ, I believe in you, that you are the only Savior. You died on the cross for me. You rose from the grave for me. I now open my heart to you, Jesus. Come into my life as my Lord and Savior. Reign in my life. Change my life, Lord. And make me the person you want me to be. Reign in my life, Jesus. Not myself anymore. But you, Jesus, reign in me. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. Jesus, take over my life. It's my heart's desire as I heard your word. I want, Lord, to be one of those who will be raptured, to be part of the bride of Jesus Christ, in order that I will reign with Christ for 1,000 years. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you. Church, it's giving time. I would like to quote this verse from Malachi 3 verse 10. This is very familiar, but this is the most promising verse to all of us who believe in God. So it says in this verse that bring the full 10% into the storehouse so that there will so that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. So in this verse, God is inviting us to test him. Why? There is a blessing that is awaiting for us. So if we give our 10%, God is also testing us to put our trust in Him, to put our needs in Him because God provides everything. He is our Jehovah Jireh. And aside from our tithes, we must also give our offering. So offering, it shows our generosity. It shows how we love God. It shows how we honor God in our life. So I do believe that one of the reasons why people don't give their tithes in offering or why they don't live their life generously is because they are afraid. Fear prevents you from giving. So why fear if we know that the blessing of God is super uh, overflowing? It says in the verse, Malachi 3 verse 10, He will open the floodgates of heaven. So what we are waiting for, church? So I encourage you, we must overcome fear because fear is not comes from God. It is from the devil. So if you want to experience breakthroughs, 
supernatural provisions of God, blessings. This is it. God is inviting us. So, church, let's give our tithes and our offering cheerfully. Hallelujah. Let's all give glory to our God for He is worthy. our full tithes and offering, I and my family will have an open heaven life. Blessing so great, I and my family can contain. I and my family will have super abundant crops. I and my family are well guarded. I and my family will live in good health. Nothing will be wasted in my life and in the life of my family. My life and my family are such a delight and nations will call us blessed and prosperous. Yes, Heavenly Father, we'll thank you for this avenue to bless your name, O God. Bless everyone who give their tithes and their offering as they put their trust in you, O Lord. Lord, we declare that this declaration shall come to pass as we continue to apply the blood of Jesus from the crown of thorns for authority, for dominion, and prosperity. And you will raise up kingly investors into your kingdom right now. Oh God, and also we apply the blood of Jesus from His hands for productivity, creativity, and all our works. Oh Lord God, all the sources of our income, there is anointing that is overflowing. Oh God, so Lord, we bless you, we love you in Jesus' name, amen. Let's remain standing and let us raise our hands to the Lord and receive now the benediction from the servant of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Shalom. Nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing broken. And may the great wealth and favor of the Lord be upon you and the blood covering will fully protect you all the days and years of your life. And all the people of God will say, Amen and Amen. God bless you all. Power.